I'm back. Well, what have I got today? Well, it's a project I've been talking about for a while, a few months while the parts arrived and stuff like that. But today, we're actually going to go and do it. Yes, the Telecaster. Well, they've been in and out of uh, being liked over the years. Some people love them, some people hate them. But I think they're on a roll. I think they're coming back in. And so it prompted me. Uh, I was in Florida on vacation. And it, it prompted me to go back to Warmoth and have a look. See what I could buy and order and things like that. And what I bought were these two things here. Yeah, the body you've seen, or if you haven't seen it, well, that's what it's like. It's got on the back too. And as for the neck, well, that's another story too. You can see this one's been, uh, already had the uh, tuners fitted and things like that. But it's quite a unique uh, neck. And what I'd say is this, that if you go down and have a look in the text below you'll find links to individual reviews of these items. And that can be a great thing, especially when you're going to go and maybe, hopefully, build your own. Because building your own, trust me in this, I can create a far better guitar than what I can go and buy off the shelf for the same money. In fact, I'll be cheaper. There's no question to that. And you know what? I tell you the best, most important thing. The most important thing is... I, me, I'll know exactly how this guitar is made. So this guitar will be, well, nigh on perfect. Now then, I also have a great big bag full of bits and parts that are going to go on to this guitar. But every last choice hasn't yet been made. So that's a good thing for you, and it's a less good thing for me. But you might find interesting some of the choices or options that are in there and what I end up with. I've got a pretty good idea where I'm going, if you want the truth, but I don't want to let the cat out of the bag. <laughs> so I think what we'll do is we'll move this stuff out of the way for now, and uh, I'll show you some of the components that could go in this, some of the components that I'm going to be using you will have never seen. Uh, I have one in mind particularly, but you will have never seen them before. And, uh, yeah, you should... Take a good look. Okay, well, I've got a couple of components here that relate to the uh, to the bridge. Yeah. Now, the thing is with a Telecaster, you can go uh, totally traditional or you can go totally untraditional. I've opted to go down the sort of non-traditional route. And the reason is that the traditional one, the original one, don't get on well with me, that doesn't. It gets my hands and things like that. Just because of how I play. More of a rock guy, not one of the, you know, uh, country guys. So that doesn't help. So I chose uh, a particular uh, unit that I've chosen for a Strat before. But there's two types. So what we're going to do is to take a close look at the two of them and see if you can make your mind up. You can type down below if you want. Which one of those two would you choose? Okay, so... I've opted for one of these two. And yeah, they're the same brand. It looks slightly different. This is a full contact hardware barracks. Or at least that's how I say it. Yeah, there it is. All good. It, there's lots of reasons why you'd, you'd look at it. We're going to look at them close up for a few seconds, but not for long. And there's the other one. I just want to show you the differences, and then you can see the differences in that other video. Now then, it's really, uh, it's a bit scary how you've got two of these. And by the way, these are not cheap. Uh, they do cost, uh, well, uh, well over a hundred plus pounds. If I, I forget the price of these, if you want the truth. I've ordered these uh, a couple of months ago. Uh, but I'll put down in the text or flash up on the screen how much these cost me at the time. If you take a quick look, let's whip this one out, if I can so this is the first one. It's pretty weighty, I must say. And uh, 
it's got the, the thickness with it, which will go down on your, uh, on your guitar. Now you'll notice on this one that everything, all these things, they're all tight. They don't move. Nothing moves. It's all solid with the bridge. And that's a good thing. And let me explain why. Because the strings come through there and over the top, as they would. But they increase the transference of the resonation of the strings dramatically into the body. And you already know that the pickups, well there's one of them, uh, are mounted to the body. So what you end up with is a bridge that can transfer huge amounts of uh, tone, really, that the other bridges won't do. Now, we'll talk about bridges a little bit more in a moment. I'm just going to have a look at this other one over here. Let's move this one out of the way. Now, this one here is, well, is this the version 1 or version 2? Who knows? Does it even say? It doesn't say anything. But interestingly, by the way, they're made in Taiwan, which, uh, yeah, I'm always into made in Taiwan. It sounds, uh, well, it doesn't just sound better. It is better. Yeah. This one is very similar. But you'll notice, if we look at it, there's no holding down of the saddles, like on that one. You see the screws there? They aren't on this one. But I can assure you, that when it's down, you know, these these don't particularly move. They move a little bit, but they're not particularly uh, bad or anything like that. Of the two, this might be the better choice. Why? Well, because it's holding everything really solid. That's a consideration. One last thing, just before we do go. I've pulled them out of the park. And this one here, compared to this one here, this one is substantially heavier than this one. And this one's got its name all across it, so while that's okay, it's a good thing, this one's a good thing too. So I think what we will do is we will actually fit this one. Well, there we go. That's one aspect of the guitar that could be uh, looked upon as, oh, he's moving away from the standard. Some people will say that. Some people love those other bridges. But for me, I'm afraid, well, I don't. So the Babix uh, is going on there, the one with the small logo, the one that weighs more. I like to see the weight in the thing and uh, the fact that those strings are flushed down on that uh, back plate. I think it makes a massive difference. Anyway, you put your opinion down below. You don't need to have my opinion. Tell me what you think if you think the old-fashioned one's better. And if you think the Babix might be better, or even that new Vega trim that they've uh, recently uh, launched, uh, yeah, let me know. Okay, well, the next thing up uh, is really the choice of pickups. And I considered lots of different pickups and lots of brands. And, uh, yeah, the first choice was this one. You'll see it. These are ultra-noiseless vintage Telecaster pickup set. That's what they are. Anyway, back to these ultra-noiseless pickups. Let's just uh, whip them out, if I can. Sure I can, one way or another. There we go. And let's have a look at what you get. Now then, I'm not going to go to the nth degree on these, except to say that these are the version after version, after uh, Model 4. Let me put it that way. These are the, the newest ones that you could... Uh, find in your Telecaster. Yeah. And um, there are good things and bad things about it. I mean, the problem with it, as it stands for me, is this depth. You can see there's a lot of depth there. Because it's a dual-coiled uh, unit, that's how they get to make it noiseless. You can see it there. And it goes the same, really, for this one. You can see that, well, that's a standard Telecaster cap, but it doesn't bend underneath because it's this much higher than what it should be and that that generates problems let me show you on the telecaster body now i'm not sure how well this shows up for you but when that's in there you have a number of problems one is that these wires here stick underneath as do these screws here 
and they bottom out on the base. So what you'd have to do is to route out this by probably, uh, I would say, a quarter of an inch. Now, I could do that. I've considered doing that. But I don't think I will. Not this time. If I put the other pickups in that I've made a choice with, then I don't like them. Well, I'll take them out and fit these. And I will route it out by a quarter of an inch. Got a good quarter of an inch spare on both of them. Make no mistake. So this pickup has been rejected really because of its depth and it doesn't work so well with the guitar body. So what I've decided to do actually is to review these pickups in this build and the reason for that as opposed to having a separate one, well I might review them separately as well, who knows, <laughs> but these are the ones that are going to be fitted and these are not something that you're just going to go out and buy. Well you could once I know somebody who has one set, he'd got two sets, I bought one. He's got one set of these pickups. Got all his information here. Because specifically, I asked him. I asked him a lot of stuff. So let's talk about the maker first of all. The maker was a guy named David White. Your chances of hearing about him is probably zero or very near to that if you've never watched my original video of the Stratocaster from 2010 or 11. She had 1.3 million views by the way uh, which was titled the best Fender Strat in the world. You should go and look at it and look at the pickups in particular and later uh, in that video or another accompanying video you'll hear it being played and it sounds completely different than any Strat that you've heard. Hmm. So David White, uh, yeah, he was really good at what he did, particularly with Stratocaster pickups, because I bought some at the time, and I fitted them in a guitar, and they sound absolutely awesome. Most people I've spoken to say, where'd you get them from? <laughs> so let's uh, have a look at these a bit closer, and I can talk about them a little bit, and I can tell you where you get the one set that's left that David White made that I note is to be in stock somewhere and they are brand new as these here are. So what you see here is what you'd buy if you was to buy them. But I don't think the guy, a uh, guy named Alan uh, from spiritpickups.com, I don't think he will give these pickups away. I don't think he will. Okay, well, here are the uh, David White pickups close up. They don't look anything really special, do they? Well, they never did in the days when he was making them. I guess. These were made sometime, probably, in the early 90s. Yeah, I would say the early 90s, sometime around then. If you go and uh, have a look at the uh, Strat set that's on the, the Best Fender Strat in the World video, or one of its accompanying other two, I go into far more depth about David White and uh, I'll put a link below to exactly where that is so you can just click it and go and see the information. Here's the other one. They don't look anything out of the ordinary, do they? They really don't. But let's talk a little bit more about the pickups. The, uh, the bridge pickup is uh, 6.5 ohms and the neck pickup is 5.49 ohms and these are the pickups exactly as they were sent from David White to uh, this other chap Alan Dingwall all them years ago and he's had them on his shelf ever since I suppose they were at the back of the the counter or something I don't know there they are, all look straightforward, all look no problem, and that is exactly what they are. They are no problem. But trying to find any would be a bit of a nightmare. And I'll, I'll give you the clue with these. Don't just look at the pickup and say, oh yeah, yeah, I, I've seen them before. Look at these wires, because David White always used this wire. I don't know why he did that. Maybe he just singled himself out or whatever, but that's the wire 
that if you see a set of pickups, maybe on eBay or somewhere else, because they do come up from time to time, they won't be cheap, I'll tell you. Uh, yeah, you, you can tell straight off that they are David White pickups. I've never seen any other pickups with that wire, just like that. You can imagine me fitting that into the uh, Telecaster and everything's gold except that. Well, what you have to do is you have to go and find one, don't you? And this top can be flipped off. It's soldered down there, I remember right. Yeah, wire's connected at the bottom there. So you just whip the wire off, take the cover off, flip the gold one on, and it'll all be good. So if you want a set of these, and there is only one set, I might tell you straight off. Uh, so you go to spiritpickups.com and fill the form out and ask for Alan. I don't want to put his phone number on in case he doesn't want me to do that. Uh, but he's the man, uh, Alan Dingwall of Alan Dingwall Guitars. And he's been around a long time. He knows what he's talking about. And those are the pickups. What more can I say? They cost typically, well, he had them uh, marked up to 600 quid. I, I didn't pay that, I negotiated the price down. What I would say to you is if you want specifically a set of David White pickups that are untouched, that's the only set that I know of. Anyway, you're never gonna be able to go to David White because he died. He died maybe early 2000, something like that. I can't tell you exactly when. But, uh, yeah, his pickups live on. Now, while we're down here, I just thought uh, on this guitar I'd uh, buy in one of these pre-made things. And this one, uh, there's nothing hyper-special about it. Whether I'll be able to make it fit easily is another story. But this one came from this chap. Who is he? Bloodstone Guitar Works. That's him. 5% off eBay prices at Bloodstone Guitar Works. Well, there he is. He's giving a bit of discount. He's doing this. He's telling you how to fit them, by the way, and things like that. And this is the one I bought. But what does concern me a little bit about this one is these are very, very short pots. They needed to be longer for what I need, I think. They m I might get away with them. I might, but I might not. So those are a little bit concerning. And this particular one is a Telecaster four-way wiring loom, uh, so it can get this extra tone that you might want. And that was one of the things I wanted to do uh, with this. And this, this isn't cheap. This wasn't cheap. I think it was about ah, 40 or 50 pounds, which is what they charge these days. That, that's if you go and buy them. I could have made my own uh, very easily and utilised parts that... Uh, well, a lot, of, a lot of other guys never would. For example, take a look at this one. Yeah, look at the size of that thing. <laughs> of the old school type, I would say. This one, where did it come from? This one came from Tad, or Tubank Doctor. You can see it there. Tad, Jupiter Bumblebee, 0 0.22 microfarads capacitor, vintage style. What's that say? Codensator to die. Whatever that means. <laughs> I'm English, I can't read that. But there it is. I don't know what it cost me, but it wasn't the 80 or 90 pounds they asked for them uh, in other places. So that's one uh, worth having a look at. I could have, I might even, yeah, I might. Who knows what will happen, but we shall see. And that's the last of, uh, almost of what I'm gonna show you, except for one last thing that's uh, in advance. Then we can get on with the build, can't we? And that's this uh, neck plate. There's a guy over in Canada that will make these neck plates, or he does make them. And you see him on reverb sometimes. There he is. And he uh, he's allowed to do that because this isn't exactly the same as the Fender one uh, at all, actually. And there it is. It's nice and in gold. This one's a uh, Limited edition, custom shop, USA. Doesn't say Fender on it or anything like that. And it, it is what it is. And it all contributes to the 
aesthetics of the guitar, I think at least. I think they matter. Anyway, I'm going to clear all this stuff away now. You've seen enough. And I'm going to go and get on with it. Oh, just, just by the way, just before I do go anywhere, I think I told you, but bloodstoneguitarworks.com. And by the way, one last thing. Every single thing that you see on this guitar is bought by me. Nothing is contributed by anybody at all. So please understand that this is not some hodgepodge review uh, from somebody who's given me a pile of bits. I didn't work that way. Okay, well, here we are back on the bench. Love it, don't you? Yeah, we've got the neck to fit. We've got a willing and participating body. I've got the neck plate. And I've got the all-important neck screws. Now, you might say to me, huh, neck screws? Mullery scory. Well, of course, you'd be wrong. You need to get the right ones. And the right ones, uh, one of the things you'll notice is they have the, the thread all the way down the screw. As you can see on that picture on the screen now, and the angles of the top and all the rest of it. And the right colour, by the way, I've got gold ones for this. And all that good stuff needs to be correct. And if you've got any doubts, go and buy the fender parts. Don't just buy any old thing that people on the internet tell you the, the correct thing. Because they won't be. These ones, I can pick the body up, and these ones will just slide straight into that hole with no drilling, no ifs, no buts. And these holes in here are already pre-drilled for the right size fender screws. And I, I always recommend, if you're in any doubt, go and get the fender components. Yeah, support fender, because you should. After all, it's their neck. Well, it isn't actually their neck, it's their licensed neck. The body isn't licensed in the same way, I believe. Uh, I don't think Fender could actually do that for some reason. But the fact is, if you're in doubt, you go and get them Fender parts and try and get the American Fender parts, as opposed to some other ones. Unless you like the neck plate that I used, which I do like. I've used them neck plates a lot. Uh, yeah, they come from Canada and they're on uh, reverb. Anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fit this neck. You've got to be very careful when you do fit this neck, by the way. Down here, it can be very tight to get into the hole. And because the neck is tapered, which you can see again on the screen right now, two of the four screws have to be cut shorter. And you have to measure that carefully, because if you don't, the screws will come out the front of your, <laughs> your guitar neck. You don't want to do that. So, if you've got a tapered one like this, shorter screws for two of them, usually take off uh, about a quarter of an inch or more. And, uh, yeah, if you've got an ordinary neck, just use the regular fender screws. I'm going to go and do it now, and I'll be back. Okay, that didn't take too long. And I used a, a Dremel tool to cut down those screws. All very nice and easy. If you haven't got one of them, you can get some copy ones and things like that. And they'll help you with your build tremendously. As you can see now, the neck is fitted very, very well. Yeah. It's going to start taking shape somewhat, isn't it? You can see that. It's an awesome body. It's an awesome neck too. So that's where we're at at the moment. I think the next thing we need to do is to take a look uh, really around the back. In this area here, and what I want to do with that is to, first of all, make the, uh, the controls fit. Because if the controls don't fit, then it gets a bit harder work. Yeah, I might have a little bit of trimming or something to do with that but it's not rocket science and uh, I'll let you know how I go on I'll show you the finished thing now just before I do continue uh, what I'd recommend you can see these holes down here and the little ones as well well they get filled up with finish if your body's been finished and it's a good idea to take thing like a router 
sorry. A thing like one of these, yeah, sort of for routing holes out. And this is a tapered one and it'll fit in and you just turn it lightly until everything's good. Okay, change of plan. <laughs> this is great if you've got a standard uh, tally caster. These controls from Bloodstone, guitar works. Perfect, it'll work perfect. But it won't work perfect in mine. And the reason is this is a rear rooted guitar. And you'll see on the front of the volume and tone that these are short ones. And I need longer ones. These don't do it. I could hack the body, but I decided against that in the end. What I'm going to do is uh, put in the copper tape in the back. I'll show you that when I've done it. And then I'm going to fit these and uh, switch the wiring over accordingly. I can do that. You should be able to do it. I'll, sh I'll be showing you what it's all like afterwards. So no problem. I just don't want to be here building this guitar for a month or something. I want to get it done. <laughs> I like that. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to go away. I'll show you the old shaft now on the uh, volume and tone. And I'll show you the new shaft now uh, that's going to be fitted and uh, it'll all work with a bit of luck. Always check yours too. Uh, I, I made an assumption that these would be longer and they're not. But, like I said, perfect for an ordinary Telecaster. But this is no ordinary Telecaster, is it? Okay, this is where we're at so far. I've got the new pots fitted in. I've got to change the wires over. And as you can see, I've been doing some of the copper tape. Yeah, to, to insulate the thing or isolate the thing from external waves that could get in there and uh, go down the cable. So they could be amplified. That's one of the things I always do with the guitars if I make one don't make them very often but that needs to be done and uh, yeah so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and swap all these bits over and I'll be back presently and then you can have a look at how far we've got to date and then we can move on to other stuff that well that's got to be done as well stop well what's all that about well as you can see I did build the guitar with the particular bridge on a set, with the particular pickups on the four-way switch. And really, I have to say, that's the point where I stopped. Yeah, I just stopped. I plugged it in. I listened to the switching that wasn't that good. I listened to the modified pickup that I couldn't really get on with with it being modified and the rest of it and I decided to say to myself you know what if I complete this guitar as it is I won't like it I know it sounds silly but this is a lesson in life for you yeah you Jimmy <laughs> yes you out there and the reason it's a lesson in life is I had set out a particular idea to get the guitar in a particular way and it didn't turn out right for me now it might turn out right for you on your first attempt I've done six or seven guitars that have always turned out right but this one somehow I think that four-way switch is a contributor to not what I want and there was something else too if I look at the the bridge the one I didn't fit holds these saddles in place very, very tightly. Whereas this one, I can sort of move them a little bit. Well, I might just change the pickups and the switching for the other stuff or not. In any case, we are where we are. This stuff's coming off and I'm going to be doing some reworking. Well, you could say we've been down a bit of a journey. Yeah, a journey. From A to B via Z. <laughs> That's what I'd say. And here's the guitar finished. But it's different. It's different than what I had before. Before I said stop. And that was because it didn't matter how I tried. I couldn't really gel with the other guitar as I'd built it. So the changes that happened... Uh, quite important actually 
And what you've got now, and this has been tried and tested, is a guitar that's, well, I have to say, it's pretty awesome. And if you play it through uh, that 5150 over there, oh my God. You'd say, well, it's not a rock guitar, Tony. But of course you'd be wrong. It is. But I'm going to cover now all the things that I did to get it where it is from where it was and you've already seen the bits and pieces of the assembly and things like that but along the way some of the changes were actually quite difficult to do or awkward to do well some were difficult there's no getting away from that so let's run through them right now one of the first things in question were the pickups that I had to modify to work with uh, the four switch method of wiring. And while that was okay, I did do that. I thought to myself, no, I shouldn't really be doing this with David White pickups. You know, they, they're sort of rare. Well, they're ultra rare. So out came the other pickups, the other choice that I'd made way, way before I bought the guitar. And those were the ultra noiseless vintage Telecaster pickup set. Now, why these are important is these are not the version 4 noiseless set that I looked at previously with the Strat. These are, if you will, let's relate them as version 5. Yeah, as opposed to version 4 that I looked at. Now, these talk about the sound of Fender's flagship instrument, Fender Ultra Noiseless Pickups, to the pinnacle in stack single coil design, crafted with new winding techniques, and trust me, they are, which you'll get to see, for live wear and more expansive tone, Alnico 5 magnets with polysol wire deliver a vintage voice with classic Telecaster sparkle without the 60 cycle hum. And I can tell you, there is no 60 cycle hum or even 50 cycle hum from what I could hear. <laughs> Ultra noiseless Telecaster pickups have the twang and bite that you expect. Well, yeah, they've got the bite, they've got the twang, but how I play it isn't like, you know, I'm not a country player. Let's put it that way. So those were the choice at the time. And by the way, these pickups, I bought them retail just as you would. So don't think that somebody's getting me to talk about these because they're not. It's all my own words and indeed my own money. But listen, there's a problem with those pickups in this guitar. You can already see the result if you look close enough. You can see what had to be done. These pickups, they didn't make them with a gold cover for the, for the neck. Oh, so you just got to flip one off and flip. No, no, you haven't. Let me take you through it because anybody who's going to change those pickups might want to do this. And I think it's an important aspect of this build, actually. I've never seen anybody anywhere do this. And uh, I think... This is what this is what it's about. So I'd actually bought a gold cover for this pickup here. Ooh, there. Yeah. And and that cover, actually I bought two just in case because you never know with stuff I do. I, I'm all over the place sometimes with it. Anyway, I bought the gold cover and when I pulled the pickups apart, well, they're not what you might think. As you can see on the screen now. At the top is the original cover of the uh, Ultra Noiseless version 5s. And at the bottom is the cover that I bought, which was a standard Telecaster cover. Strangely enough, the top original cover actually is a modified, it looked to me like being a modified Telecaster cover. And uh, the one that I tried to fit, a standard, doesn't fit. The, there's no way that you're going to be able to fit that. Well, there is a way you're going to fit it. What you've got to do <laughs> is you have to go and mark that pickup cover, like the picture on the screen you see right now. And then what you have to do is you have to go and get a Dremel tool. You haven't got one. Well, you might be able to do it with some tin snips or something like that. But I use the Dremel tool. And it's quite a difficult thing to do. Uh, you don't want to put it in a vise because you don't want to mark the gold and things like that. You can see where it's marked there. And here's a quick shot of the other side of the pickup, because the other side has got two lugs 
as opposed to the original side I just showed you they've got one log and you can see they're marked out differently and there's a quick shot of the end of the pickup and it's a sort of v-shape you can see it there so what you've got to do is go and cut them out now what's on the screen now is the uh, the pickup cover I did and I fitted it and I thought oh, I'll get away with that you know how you do <laughs> well no I, I decided as you can see there the Dremel tool would run down the edge of one corner of the pickup cover. So thankfully I had a second one and I took extreme care with the second one to actually get that one uh, as it should be. So what you can see on screen now is that, that neck pickup. And that's the one that gave me trouble. Trust me, it did. You can see it there now with the gold cover fitted. And had it not been cut away as we showed you earlier, or as I showed you earlier, then there's no way that it fits, because I did try. I, I'm idle, you know, I try to get out of things, do things the easy way. But trust me, you're not going to be able to do that. You've got to go and mark it up and cut it back. So there's the finished pickup with the gold on it. And, uh, yeah, I think it came out quite nice. But there's more. And I, I knew there was more. Yeah. I've been here before on the version 4 ultra noiseless pickups they have screws underneath and they have uh, wires that go underneath the pickup they're, they're soldered to the underneath of the pickup there's a picture of the assembly when I've taken the wires from underneath the pickup and soldered them above the pickup that's one thing you've got to do on both pickups and if you're a little bit numpty with that uh, you could damage one of the pickups or both the pickups and they may never work again you've got to be very careful with all that sort of stuff and that that's essential because if you don't do that you're going to be rooting the guitar out or routing the guitar I didn't actually want to route anything so I kept the guitar as standard as a Telecaster as I possibly can and that's why this this little section here is on here because if you've got a standard Telecaster, but you wanted to fit the Ultra Noiseless version 5s, uh, these particular ones, yeah, these Ultra ones, yeah, well then, you're going to have to do what I did. And if you don't, make no mistake, they do not fit. So you can see them wires there, all soldered to the top of the pickup rather than underneath it. But there is more with those pickups. If you take a look at the picture that's on the screen now, you can see two big black screws underneath the pickup. It, it roughly uh, stopping the pickup from going all the way down into the cavity of a standard Telecaster. And that, again, can be a problem. Now, there is a fix for it that I did. What I did was I marked the two black screws with a, a black marker and fitted the pickup to both of the holes. And it left a nice little mark where I could just make a, make a little indentation into the wood for those two screws to sink into the wood. Nice and simple to do. Anybody could do it. And that was my answer for the, uh, the screws that shouldn't be there. Hmm. Now I do want to cover something else that's not immediately obvious when you look at this guitar from before and you look at it from now. Well, you know I had two of these two of these bridges, these Babbix bridges. One seemed to be an older one, and one seemed to be a newer one. By design, that is, they were both basically brand new. Well, this one, uh, this one is described, this one here, is described as the Babbix FCH Tally Original Series Tallycaster Bridge. And just for your own information, the price of this thing in the UK was £169. This is not a cheap piece of gear. 169 pounds it's it's part number was bbz fch dash 6t qqg there it is and uh, i want you to remember that why well let me explain you see it's got this bridge on now which i believe is probably the later version yeah but you can see a photograph on the screen right now of that bridge that we just spoke about, not the one that's fitted, but the other one. And I fitted it to the guitar just to see what it was like. In the meantime, sort of passing through type of thing. Because I've got to change the pickups anyway. So I thought, oh, four screws, why not? Yeah, that was a massive mistake. 
Now, earlier in the video, when I was doing the original build, this came up. This and the other one came up, and I had them both in my hands. And the one that's fitted felt much heavier. And this one, and it was also thinner, a thinner material. I, I didn't think anything of it at the time. And then I proceeded to do a few other things, and then look at the intonation and the... the string heights and all the rest of it and there was a major problem this is why it's included this is why it's not on the guitar but it's included for your information and you should take on board what i say about different parts and people and what they say and what they don't say because a lot of the times it doesn't always work out okay so the real problem was it didn't really matter how i made adjustments to that bridge I spent about 50 minutes to an hour trying to solve that easily and there was no easy solve to it. I didn't really want to start changing the guitar around again, uh, particularly relating to the neck, this part here, when I knew that the neck was right. So that to me says, rip this bloody thing back off, put this one on. And that's exactly what I did. So there's a close-up picture on the screen now of the uh, the bridges with the way it is now that's the bridge i ended up choosing so if you choose the other one it's not a good idea in my opinion so I, i'd advise you not to spend your 169 quid which in my opinion makes that very overpriced i'd buy this one which i think was a little bit cheaper yeah but not buy much in any case there you go that was what i had to do with the bridge and I, I ended up putting the original choice back on the guitar. And that's an important statement too. So it's not that everything's right or everything's wrong. It's that some components weren't gelling right for me. Well, we're romping through this build. <laughs> and I haven't done a thing on camera, but I did do it all. And it's not really rocket science to build a guitar like this. Really, it isn't. The next thing I went to, as I, I, I was going round in my mind because I tried this guitar. I just plugged it in over over there, like I said, and uh, yeah, it it wasn't for me. It just didn't give me the right tones or the tones that I thought I was going to get. That's what made me look at the pickups, and it also made me look at the wiring. I'm not saying the pickups sounded bad because it wasn't a question of that. It was more a question of. The results on that wiring setup, plus the fact that I'd done that modification to the uh, to the David White pickups, which I didn't really want to do. So out came the pickups. Da -da 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 -da. You've been through all that, and then I rewired the back. A part of rewiring the back was, for example, taking a Fender Genuine Parts three-way switch and using the three-way switch. So I fitted that, pulled the four-way switch out. I left the uh, volume and tone in there, the originals, simply because the ones I've ordered still have not arrived, although they were promised by last Friday, to be with me. Why was I changing them? Well, there's no uh, in-depth adjustment because they have a very tiny shank. Now, it's fine, it fits right, but only just. And I, I like to have a bit of play and things like that. So, back in my pea brain, I decided I was going to change them. Ultimately, I didn't change them because I can't, because I ain't got the bits. But believe it or not, on the screen now is the image of the entire wiring for a standard Telecaster. Yeah, three-way switch. Thanks very much. That's all I need. Don't need anything else, I don't think. And if I do, it's a simple matter just to reconfigure that wiring maybe at some stage. But having tried the guitar with its three position wiring and these pickups, to be honest, uh, I don't want to change anything. It sounds absolutely brilliant. Or it does to me. It might or might not to you. It might come out well in the video. It might not. It, uh, you'll get the idea. You also notice on the controls, these things down at the front down there. Yeah, I chose black controls. I, I toyed with gold ones, but I, I think the black ones 
work better because, well, actually, they match with this up here. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they're not. And they match with the black pick up there. So they're all sort of a sort. And of course, there are millions of uh, parts out there that all claim to be great. And I ordered two or three different ones, different sets from different people. And they, well, basically, I hate to say this, but they were all crap. <laughs> they were all absolute junk. And some of them were charging a fair bit of money. You want to be really careful what you're buying. And I'm, I'm saying this over and over as we go through this. You be careful what you're buying and try and uh, try and have the vision in your mind before you, uh, before you build the guitar. It helps. Anyway, I disregarded all the others and in the end, the ones I fitted are these. And these are Ernie Ball knobs. There they are. Yeah, they're on the guitar there. You can see them. Well, hopefully. Well, you can nearly see them. Let's uh, zoom back out a little bit. And all very nice. And by the way, the little switch top is a genuine Fender one. Yeah, I splashed out on a genuine Fender top too. Yeah, so there they are. I just wanted to raise that as these being perfect. Perfect. No ifs, no buts. They just slide on, you tighten them up, and they're in business. Well, a lot of the stuff that I was looking at, honestly, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't fit it to a Harley Benton. <laughs> now, by the way, on that wiring, I just copied the fender wiring, the fender wiring, as it comes out the box with those pickups. So let's have a look at a few shots as we go. Uh, there's a shot of the gold pickup with its surround, and if you look at that surround. I'm not entirely convinced with that either. If you notice, it's gold isn't really very gold. Uh, yeah, I'm not really that happy with that. So at some stage that might be screwed off and another one screwed on that's actually got some gold in it. There's the finished Babix bridge, the one I stayed with, the one that's fitted right now. And yeah, it looks very nice. I've still got the Fender logo on that, uh, on that pickup and I could do things about that. Uh, Although I couldn't be bothered, if you want the truth. At the end of the day, it's basically like a Telecaster, isn't it? They are Fender pickups, aren't they? What else could I say? Now, there is another thing I want you to talk about, and that's a case. I know you'd say, well, that's not part of a guitar build, Tony. Well, actually, it is. Yeah, so there's a few pictures of the case on the screen right now. And I think you'll agree that the nice blue and brown goes very well with the guitar. It uh, was chosen as such. Now, this is one of them cases that's a more modern one that's been... I've seen these recently. Uh, I mean, I've bought the black ones and I've bought the, the sort of brown ones and off and on different types. Uh, but this new blue type, you'll see them if you go and look. I think it was about £120, which for the UK is pretty cheap. Yeah, I paid 180 or 190 for some of them other ones. Oh, my God. So there's the guitar in its case, and I think you'll agree that, yeah, it looks uh, pretty awesome. And once you start getting close to it and taking a few pictures like these, you can see that uh, that figuring on the body is just another planet. It's just in another place. You don't see guitars like that, honestly. Yeah. So that's everything you'd really want to know about the guitar, except how I set it up and things like that. And well, what I did to set it up, you put this thing here, where's it gone? You put this thing on one, and you stop it at 12, and you put feeler gauges under about number seven fret. And I was getting about eight thou, which is great for the neck relief. I'd done that earlier and nothing's changed. I kept the same strings, uh, which were, I think on this one, they're nines, yeah. I was going to fit eights, but I never quite made it to that time. <laughs> so, uh, nines they are. The intonation was, was not correct, because you have to screw off all these saddles to take the bridge off, and as you know, I flipped the bridge to the other one to check it. So I had to redo the intonation again. I checked the string heights again. I did the pickup heights again, all that sort of juicy stuff. 
But apart from that, to be honest, it worked first go. Everything worked as I did it. And it's one of the reasons I'm not going to go back and say, oh, look at me doing this, because I've done that. If you want to see some of that, I'll put a, a, a guitar build that I did down below that covers everything, if you want to see that stuff. But I thought you might to like to see this guitar and my story about this guitar, because I think the story about the guitar is just as important as the actual build. The lessons I learn are lessons that you would learn. You're no different, I don't think. Well, unless you, you only got one set of bits and then you've got to make it work, haven't you? So what I want to do, really, is to sum up. Let's think of the original idea. You buy a body, you buy a neck that you think will be good for you. they got to be... Well, if you buy them from different companies, you might have different problems. But in this case, they both came from Warmoth. I paid for them both, by the way. And they fitted perfect first go, as I always knew they would. Everyone I've ever bought from Warmoth, like this, fits perfect every time. Never had a single problem. Uh, then you, you think of the other components. Well, I want a, I want a decent neck plate. I got the one from the guy in Canada. I got locking fender uh, machine heads because I like them. I've got them on lots of guitars. I think they're great. I've got this particular nut that we've spoke about before. And one of the things I'm going to show you in just a few seconds about this nut is when you come and do the intonation, you won't see what you think you'll see. It's really weird. Let me, uh, let me show you. Okay, well, take a look at these. Um, they're sort of funny. What you normally get isn't like this. I mean, what's normal? What's normal with a guitar? No, what I really mean is these three normally are staggered like that. And then these three here are normally staggered like that. Believe it or not, that's what you normally see. Like so, and then like so. But as you can see on these, they're pretty much level, except for this one's slightly different. So one of these will change, in effect, the positions of those saddles at that end. So when somebody contacts me and says, yeah, you haven't intonated that guitar right, Tony, which people have historically off and on. Well, you're wrong. <laughs> well, I hope you get that and I hope you understand that thing about the intonation and how these things are offset or they're not. Because, uh, yeah, it, it first glance, when you're doing this stuff, you wouldn't think it to be like that. But it seems to be like that anyway. The neck is uh, perfect as it should be. Everything's dead right. I've even got these in the right place. I don't know what to say. <laughs> so those lessons to be learned. This is what I'd say from the top. Number one, always try and be very, very specific with what you're going to do before you start. Try and view the guitar that you're going to build in your mind before you even buy a bean. Do a lot of research. I didn't research that Babix close enough, so I ended up with two. On the pickups and things like that, the wiring, that's a very subjective thing. And if you're not a Telecaster fan or a Telecaster user, let me rephrase that, because you might buy you might buy one and build it, as I have. Yeah, you want to do the research on these uh, types of wiring. And I noticed in Guitarist this particular month, which I think is uh, the, this particular month for them, something like February 23, <laughs> no loonies. Uh, yeah, but it, you'll see it. It'll be out there on the shelves. And they cover about, I don't know, 15 or 20 mods, believe it or not, for a Telecaster. When, in reality, the truth is, you don't really need any mods. What you need is a three-way switch, as I found out, and uh, some pickups that are good for a three-way switch. And these are. They're probably good for other things, but that's how it's set up here. If you've got something that doesn't quite fit right, or it doesn't this, or it doesn't that, or it wasn't what you, they said it was, or you thought it was, or, 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 don't fit it. Don't waste your time 
putting something on your guitar build that really isn't for you. You'll know what I mean if, if you build one of these or if you've already done that. You'll know when you're doing it. It's not quite for me. Then don't do it. Try and have, try and set yourself a budget. Now, I know it's not always easy with this sort of stuff. The prices are going up and down. Well, I could describe it, but then I'd be banned. Yeah, so try and set yourself a budget and work it out as near as you can before you even start. And then add a couple of hundred dollars because trust me, it can be this, it can be that, it can be the other. The case might have changed price that's going on. It's endless. The problems are endless when it's talking of money and building one of these. And try to have, this is the next one, try to have a fallback plan. The fallback plan basically says, well, I've built it this far, but what now? It's not for me. It's not, it doesn't feel right. It doesn't play right. It doesn't sound right for me. That's what you've got to say to yourself. I need to change it. I don't want to build a guitar that's cost, for example, a couple of thousand dollars or pounds. And then it does, it's not for me. I'd immediately be wanting to change it or to sell it. And you don't want to do that. That's not the reason you're building it, is it? You're building it because you want a unique guitar for you. One for you. That's the important thing. You mustn't lose sight of that. Don't spoil the guitar for the sake of $5. <laughs> what do I mean? Or for the sake of $20 or $30. Let's keep it below $50, eh? That sounds like a plan. You could fit a standard nut there. You could. You'll save yourself about $30. This has got its good points. You could fit standard tuners. You probably save about $40. You could fit locking uh, string thingies. <laughs> yeah. That'll cost you a little bit more. You could fit a standard run and mill plate on the back. I mean, I could go on and on and on, but all of these minor little changes are usually below $50. So it's nicer to get things right. And if you've got something that isn't exactly right, think of those uh, volume and tone pots that are fitted to this one. They're only just okay, but they are okay. So I'd ordered more. They didn't come, blah, blah, blah. I've left them in. Will I change them? Probably not. <laughs> they are what they are. Now I know this hasn't been a type of guitar build that you might have thought it would have been. But I'm telling you now that everything that's happened to me in this guitar build could happen to you. Or you could have this problem or that problem or the other problem. And what this guitar build is doing really, hopefully, it's making you think. It's making you think about every component that you should be uh, considering or not considering as you go along before you start anything. Don't try and cut corners and things like, you know, I, I, I sound like an old record, don't I? But it's true. So that's the guitar today, as it is, finished absolutely a thousand percent perfect. I couldn't have bought one, I doubt, from anywhere or anyone that's better than what this is, of this type of guitar. And to me, that says such a lot, honestly, such a lot. It's so suited for what I play. Uh, you'll hear some of the twiddling and that a bit later on in the video. Well, not very far off, uh, in fact. But I, I wanted to get all the stuff across to you as best I could about the changes of this and the fitting of that and, the, you know, all them things that... I've covered that were unimportant but are hyper important to some people. Now if you check down in the text below you will find that there are links to other projects I've done, a couple or three, where I go through the complete uh, procedure of building a guitar like this. I've still got two of these uh, upstairs, yeah, and I, I pull them out occasionally. But this one uh, feels at the moment like the favourite, but the others are good, trust me. So all that sort of stuff will be down in the text 
and anything else that I can think to put down in there because there is a lot to do. The, a video like this isn't a five minute video. I've been on this for like a week or more. Well, it's been extended really because of the uh, some of them components being swapped and, and things like that. It's a pity that the, the first choice of everything didn't work as I wanted it. But that's just life. It's because I've never used a four-way uh, type of switch before. And by the way, it's no reflection on the guy that sold it to me. His was for whatever it was. And it, it's me that's the problem with that, not, not his parts. And that's the same with the David White pickups. It's me that's the problem and not the parts. Uh, understand that. So what I want out to you guys now, I want you to sit back. Assuming you've been all the way through this video, and I hope you have, seriously, I hope you have, because you will learn something. I don't know what, but you will learn something. And I want you to put down below whether you think this guitar is worth the sort of £2,100 or £2,200, we'll call it that because of the case and bits and pieces, whether it's actually worth that and could I have bought one like this cheaper from either Fender or anybody else that's as good as this and this is as good as it gets so let's let's remove the thought about oh that's not very good remove that out of your mind because it is good and uh, yeah tell me is this a, the way to move forward with a, the purchase of a guitar assuming you've got enough skill to to do them little bits and pieces or isn't it? Or should I have just bought a Fender Telecaster from Fender uh, with the same pickups in, basically? I'd have got it on and bought the Ultra, the newest one, uh, with these vintage uh, noiseless pickups in and the wiring and the, the this and that and the other. Would I have been better doing that? Well, some could argue that I might have been better doing that regarding resale price. Some people argue to me all day, they, oh yeah, Warmoth, oh, resale price, crap, it's crap. Crap, man. <laughs> well, they do. But I, I'm pretty confident that if I was to put this up for sale, I would at least get my money back. I'm quite confident of that. Especially here in the UK. I can't speak for the USA. But I do believe that. Uh, yeah, everyone that I've ever made, I, I can always get my money back. I don't doubt it for a second. So that isn't one of the criteria. Anyway, that's it for now on the thoughts. Uh, yeah, do put down there what you think about that and whether, you know, uh, building one of these is the way to go or just buy something off the shelf and knock around. Well, you could knock around, but I wouldn't knock this one around. <laughs> now, don't forget to uh, go to www.tonymackenzie.com. Load of reviews on there. I haven't updated it in a fair while. To be fair, I haven't. It's time. It's, it's what it's all about, really. And uh, yeah. So uh, what more can I say about that? It's worth a visit, though. I mean, I get thousands and thousands of people a month going onto that site. So it's got stuff on that you haven't seen anywhere else. And some of it's not even on YouTube. So uh, there's always something to learn from there. As a score, well, I'll give it a 10 out of 10, but I would, wouldn't I? <laughs> anyway, that's it for now. And uh, yeah, plane's coming up now. Hope you like it. Doesn't matter if you don't. You're just getting an idea of the tones. Yeah, when you crank it up, it does sound good. It does sound really good. It, it won't be for country guys. So if you're a country player and you're expecting me to play that stuff, man, you're light years ahead of me. I can't do that stuff and I am what I am. But at least you'll get to hear the guitar. And I think that's the important thing off the video. Yeah. So here we go. Here's the playing. <laughs> 